Now this is a video I never thought I would be making. Players from the oldest Anarchy server in Minecraft have managed to do what many considered impossible. Jeb, the lead developer of Minecraft at Mojang, was tracked down in-game, brutally executed, and then the server he was playing on was blown to smithereens, all at the hands of 2B2T griefers. I was so shocked by this news that when I first saw the footage, I instantly thought it was fake. There was no way this was possible. How could the head honcho of all of Minecraft get tracked down to a private server like this? I got in touch with the griefers responsible, and to my surprise, How the methods they used to find his account were surprisingly simple. It turns out that Minecraft server software by default has some glaring security server, issues. It's allowed these griefers oh, to track individual players server. across tens of thousands of servers. I'm sure you have a lot of questions already, so today we'll discuss how the lead developer of Minecraft was apparently hunted down. We'll analyze the proof the griefers have provided to see if it was actually him. And then we'll discuss the methods used to find not only Jeb, but other high-profile players as well. It's crazy today, so let's get started. I saw a cheater. on a massive project called Operation Copenheimer, in which they've been using a bot Open to scan the entire internet for open Minecraft servers, even ones that were never publicly advertised. Once found, they would then proceed to grief the servers with the least amount of protections. Now that you're caught up, this is where our story begins. About four weeks ago, the fifth column made some improvements to their bot, allowing it to track individual players by username. You could simply type it in, and it would search every open Minecraft server across the entire planet. It would then tell you if that player Enjoy was online and the IP of the server they were playing on. The reason this is possible is because Minecraft servers publicly list who is online when you ping them. Since Copenheimer has indexed almost every open Minecraft server, it pings them all in 20 minute intervals. They did some tests and sure enough, it was an accurate way to search for specific players. With this new feature, one of their first targets were large YouTubers. They decided to do a search for Dream and actually found several servers where the username had been seen. But when they logged in, they found that in each case, the online account was a fake one generated by a server plugin. The Copenheimer bot will list if a server is running specific plugins, and sure enough, all of these servers had been using them to generate fake users. So in a way, the trolls ended up getting trolled. How ironic. After a few days, the fifth column had done numerous searches on famous figures in the Minecraft community, but eventually, they got around to searching for Jeb, the lead developer slash creative no director of Minecraft, be who has arguably server. become the face of the enough. game after Notch's departure many years ago. While Jeb is a famous figure, he's not someone you would really think to search for in the game itself. But the group began looking anyway. They had been scanning for his username for a few days when, one evening, to their complete shock, they had one result. Jeb's account was spotted on a small, unlisted Minecraft server. When it was first discovered, some in the fifth column assumed it was fake. But upon examining the server with the Copenheimer bot, they found there were no plugins, modifications, or any other server software being run. It was 100% vanilla and connected to Mojang's authentication servers, meaning that there was no realistic way you could fake an account as being online. And on top of that, the server was not whitelisted, meaning anyone could join. The group began wondering how to proceed. Were they really about to grief Minecraft's number one in command? They were still unsure if it was actually him, and they didn't want to directly join out of fear of scaring him off. So for one week, they would monitor the server and its player list to check for any irregularities. They discovered that even though the server was not run by Jeb himself, 
his account would be seen online every few days, and this pattern was not directly linked to any of the other players seen online, which was further evidence that he was likely the real deal. The physical server itself was located in Europe, only a few hours from where Mojang's headquarters were located in Sweden. Based on their findings, they determined that it had to be him. If they could log in, destroy the server, and take out Jeb, it would potentially be the most high-profile grief in the group's history. And so, they waited patiently until an opportunity presented itself. One evening, they saw that Jeb's account was the only one online. Several fifth column members joined and instantly began griefing the entire area. Since the server was completely vanilla, they could utilize hack clients without any issues. After making a flint and steel, one of the main griefers, Orsint, managed to find Jeb's account AFK at a farm in the nether. After breaking the glass he was surrounded by, he then proceeded to burn it with fire. Since Jeb was AFK, he stood no chance. To add a cruel irony to it, there were pet dogs watching. Dogs were a feature implemented by Jeb many years ago, so his own creations watched him turn to dust. If this was truly the real Jeb, it seemed he had become yet another innocent victim of the fifth column. This was only possible because basic Minecraft servers by default are not secure. Let me give you a good analogy. Running a Minecraft server with the default software no is shit. a lot like buying a new car, except the car doors Amazon have no locks on them. Apparently. The manufacturers just assume that anyone that's going to steal your car will not be able to find it. Well, thanks to the Copenheimer bot, the fifth column knows where every car on the planet is located, and they can publicly see the names of anyone sitting in them, allowing them to track down the cars of their choosing. At this point, if security is such a concern for you, the car makers just assume you'll know how to install the locks by yourself, aka know how to whitelist and protect your server, which, as we've seen, many people don't. This is a widely known poor practice of software vendors to not secure their software out of the box. So that should explain how the fifth column are tracking down players so easily. But now we need to have the final discussion. The Jeb account that the fifth column managed to kill, was it actually the man himself? I've taken a look at the footage, seen the evidence presented by the griefers, and also discussed it with some associates who are well versed on the technical side of Minecraft. I would say there's a 90% chance this was the real Jeb. The only thing that has me a little bit skeptical is the fact that his account disconnected as soon as he was killed. Now from personal experience, I've had this bug happen to me before where I was disconnected from a server when I suffered a death. But I can't remember if the servers were vanilla or not, and I was unable to find a lot of documentation about this particular bug. But other than that one aspect, everything else seems legitimate. The fact that the server had no visible plugins, was connected to the authentication servers preventing account spoofing, Jeb having the actual Mojang cape, the physical location of the server in Europe, and the fact that no other notable players such as YouTubers or Mojang employees... Sure, it was him, but then again, who fucking cares? <laughs> like who? If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on what you want to see next.